in the spirit of this grand jury hearing on Tuesday, if you want to offer some evidence to make the case that Governor Corey himself should come clean. of the amount of campaign contributions made to Governor McCrory's gubernatorial campaigns in 2008 and 2012, ranging from employees, former employees, and family of Duke Energy, the Duke Energy and Progress Energy uh, Political Action Committee, Duke now owned by, Progress now owned by Duke Energy, and contributions from Duke Energy to the Republican Governors Association, which then funneled tens of millions of dollars or millions of dollars into Detroit campaigns in 08 as well. That's a billion dollars. It's a lot of money. The second, Exhibit B, is a blow up of what is his government for a statement of economic interest. Basically, in shorthand, it's called the SEI, and it's filed with the Exit Commission in Raleigh. And what it clearly shows it is that Duke Energy is a company in which he currently owns at least $10,000 in company stock. Now, when journalists are going to ask who should pay for the massive cleanup of these toxic coal ash lagoons around the state, journalists are asking, should it be the taxpayers, the ratepayers, or the shareholders? Journalists should remember. Pat McCrory is a shareholder. How big of a shareholder? We don't know. He won't say. Pat McCrory needs to disclose. He needs to come clean. This document shows that he owns at least $10,000 in stock, but he could own more. It could be $20,000. It could be $100,000. It could be a lot more. We don't know. Exhibit C, this basically shows all the former Duke Energy employees who are in key positions in state government in the McCrory administration, working from the bottom. The Commerce Secretary is a former Duke Energy employee of 17 years, a person who runs uh, Human Resources, the Office of uh, Personnel Office, was a Duke Energy employee of 40 years. The person who is actually the Communications Director for, for Diener, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Diener's spin doctor. He was a Pro Progress Energy employee. The person who is the Diener Ombudsman, the man is supposed to be the ethical compass inside the Environmental Regulatory Agency. He was a uh, Duke Energy employee for 38 years. And of course, the man at the top, Governor McCrory himself, I think a lot of people now know, he worked at Duke Energy for almost 30 years. Finally, we have Exhibit D. And basically, this is a blow-up of the first uh, what was the notice of intent to sue from the Southern Environmental Law Center and a coalition of other conservation groups. Basically what this was, was a notice that uh, environmental, conservation, and citizen groups were planning to sue Duke Energy uh, for alleged violations of the Clean Water Act. Uh, the state had 60 days to come in and uh, take control of that, which is uh, allowed under the, the uh, federal law. And uh, Diener did that. Diener came in on day 58, and they settled with Duke, uh, a company which is valued at over $50 billion. Uh, they were given a settlement, a fine of $99,000. A company which made $257 billion in profits in one year was offered a fine of $99,000. Folks, this really is chunk change for a $50 billion company. Uh, it, you know, it is really a, a slap on the wrist. So this settlement uh, was proposed, and then after the Dan River disaster, uh, it was then uh, withdrawn, and it's now under review. But this uh, Exhibit D was really uh, what has really triggered the federal investigation and the subpoenas which are now flying around state government. Uh, this was really uh, the alarm bell, which uh, led many to wonder, well, what's going on? Is, is Diener really uh, the watchdog that it's supposed to be? Uh, and so that's basically uh, what we're asking for is Governor McCrory to come clean. We're asking that he clean up the water, clean up the coal ash, and he disclose his own uh, 
personal financial ties to Duke Energy. So next I'd like to uh, introduce Adam Sotak from uh, Democracy North Carolina. Thank you so much, Garrick and Progress NC for organizing this on this crucial issue. My name is Adam Sotak, that's S-O-T-A-K. I'm the organizing director with Democracy North Carolina based in Durham, and we're a statewide uh, voting rights and money and politics watchdog. And what we're here to talk about today is coal ash and cold cash. Because when I heard uh, Governor McCrory the other day saying that this issue shouldn't be politicized, that was basically laughable to me because the issue of pollution money and politics in North Carolina has been politicized for decades. And when you look at the staggering numbers of campaign contributions, the $1.1 million that have gone into the governor's coffers in 2008, 2008 and 2012, as well as the millions of dollars in lobbying expenses and other political donations that Duke Energy puts into the political process, you better believe that politics is involved. And we need Governor McCrory to come clean and be transparent with the people of North Carolina about what type of vested interest and relationship he has with Duke Energy and where we the people stand versus this huge corporate special interest that's pouring all this money into the political process. Um, the, the ratepayers and the taxpayers should not be responsible for paying for a political risk that Duke Energy took. And this was a political calculation that they made that by giving contributions, by lobbying, by basically trying to hijack the regulatory process, they could get off scot-free, you know, or with minimal payment, no matter what would happen. And what's happening is they're putting the people, uh, the wildlife, the environment of North Carolina at risk and we should not have to pay for that. That's the stockholders' responsibility. You know, they are the, the benefactors when the company's making profit, and they should accept the risk when Duke Energy has to clean this mess up. So we want them to get this coal ash away from these water sources, not dump it in poor communities, as is usually the trend with these things. You gotta figure out a responsible way to move that coal ash in a place where it's gonna be cause the least harm. And we want Governor McCrory to come clean and disclose his ties to Duke Energy. We want him to also call for real reform in the state of North Carolina. Governor McCrory came in to, as governor and said that he was going to clean up the pay-to-play culture. But there's no greater example of pay-to-play than Duke Energy in North Carolina politics. This is an opportunity for him to stand up and do what's right for us, call for greater disclosure, some uh, campaign finance regulations so that we understand where all this dark shady money is that's flying around in the political process and clean this mess up. So we stand here today with the people of North Carolina, uh, Western North Carolina, all over the state to say, come clean, Governor. Yeah. Yes. So when Adam says uh, we stand here with the people of North Carolina, uh, you know, that's just not a, a statement out there on the land. Polling shows the vast majority of voters across the state, uh, they want to energy and it's shareholders to pay for this. They don't want taxpayers or ratepayers to pay for this. People of all political persuasions clearly want uh, the shareholders of Duke Energy to pay for this. So Clean Water uh, for North Carolina is a group that's been working on water quality issues uh, around the state and here in the uh, Mountains of North Carolina for a number of years. Here's Katie Hicks from Clean Water North Carolina. Thank you all. Uh, I'm the Assistant Director for Clean Water for North Carolina. We are a statewide environmental justice organization. And we know that every North Carolinian has a right to accessible, affordable, and clean drinking water. And we also have a right to rivers and streams that can supply the needs of all of us. Uh, not just, as Adam said, the water-hogging power generation and industrial users. It's important that our local, state, and federal elected officials hold big polluters accountable and look out for the best interest of all the people, protecting our water quality for now and also for future generations. Clean water is vital to our economy in North Carolina, and especially here in western North Carolina. Our clean, clear mountain water has brought the water industry here, outdoor recreation, and created many jobs.
jobs. But the high hazard coal ash dump that sits very close to us behind this power plant looms large as a constant threat that could take lives if it were not over I-26 and could contaminate the French Broad River for years. Accidents can happen, and as we've just seen so tragically in Eden, North Carolina, they do. Governor McCrory was elected to represent all North Carolinians, not just Duke Energy's shareholders. It's part of his job to protect our environment, uh, to enforce the laws, to support agencies uh, in his administration that will enforce the laws instead of just looking out for the business community. And that would provide justice. It's time for him to do his job and make Duke Energy clean up all of its toxic coal ash dumps. Our neighbors to the south in South Carolina have started to do this, and they've done it without placing that entire burden on the ratepayers. Cleaning up toxins, I want to close by saying that this is a matter of environmental justice. We're protecting vulnerable communities. Uh, who are often the ones living in close proximity to these leaky coal ash dumps and uh, may have problems with air quality, uh, well contamination, and uh, other public health and environmental justice. So I wanted to quickly underscore something Katie said. You know, in South Carolina, uh, they are on a plan to clean up all of their coal ash sites, and the shareholders are paying for it. Rate payers are not. So this this call to uh, make the shareholders pay for these 30, the cleanup of these 37 coal ash pits, uh, this isn't a radical idea. This is what's what's happening in other places. Uh, once again, we're calling. Uh, Governor, to come clean McCrory, clean up the water, clean up the coal ash, and come clean on his personal ties with Duke Energy. So far, he hasn't done. Um, he's tried to claim that uh, you know his investments in his former employer are, are tied up in a 401k with uh, small cap stocks here and large cap stocks there. But the bottom line is he's filed a, a, a public disclosure, which uh, says that he owns at least ten thousand dollars duke energy stock but it really doesn't say how much he owns it really doesn't disclose retirement or, or investments in the company and so when he is he's going to have some influence on this question um, who's going to pay for this say is that the the ultimate decision on who should pay for the cleanup is one of the utilities the commission. Well we all know if the governor were to come forward and lead on the issue, make a clear statement on who he thinks should pay on the reason stands that that would have a large so uh, we're going to ask the governor not only to disclose, but also to leave.